Good. Okay, welcome to peripheral neuropathy. This is kind of a pet peeve of mine because when people come in and they say, I have neuropathy, it's not like an entity or disease. The symptoms are real, but we, let's look at the cause of it. Because if you treat any disease or condition without addressing the cause, you're in deep trouble. Okay, does that make sense? Now, it's kind of fun. I, I wanted to share with you one of the comments that, that we got on, online. And this guy was a comment on our fibromyalgia. I've just been diagnosed with fibromyalgia 11 years ago, bipolar disorder six years ago, Parkinson's two years ago. I have what I call lead arm symptoms. Some days my upper arms feel so heavy with crushing pain I can't lift them. Add to that irritable bowel syndrome, acid reflux, sleeplessness, and I don't even know how I got to this channel. So to me, this video is a miraculous find. Cool. Wow. Yeah, the next comment below that was somebody calling me a quack. <laughs> so when, when you look at this and, and I mean just, just like going over her symptoms it's like acid reflux and irritable bowel syndrome that means she's got leaky gut she's going to have un, you know undigested proteins in the bloodstream this is going to cause an immune system response that's going to cause joint pain everywhere does that make sense okay with reflux if they're treating it with antacids that means she's going to be calcium deficient and iron deficient and she's she's going to be magnesium deficient so this is going to cause de depression of her nervous system and since it's irritable bowel syndrome the b vitamins are absorbed in the distal ilium so that means she's going to have major neurologic symptoms so so when i'm looking at this i'm i'm deciphering and i'm going yeah no wonder you should have all those symptoms so let's go in and solve it D does that make sense yeah, I, I know it, it does. And so we can't treat, treat just the symptoms. Now the nervous system, you all know when the sperm hits the egg, how it starts separating, right? You know, it goes in the two to four to eight to 16 to 32. What you might not know is it turns into a flat plate and it's called a trilamerator disc and it folds, okay? And that folding of the disc is, folds right over the nervous system. And so all the organ systems actually grow off of that nervous system like fruit on a tree. It's the first system to form. And so you start looking at this and saying, wow, that nervous system controls and coordinates every function. Now, peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral means nerves away from the center. Neuropathy means nerve problem. Okay, that's all it means. But when you start looking at some of the causes, diabetes, vitamin deficiency, leprosy, um, medication, traumatic injury, uh, alcohol, immune system, infection. And so instead of dealing with the cause, what do pe most people do? They just get deal with the symptoms. Okay, they'll get like prednisone or steroids or Neurontin. I mean, it's, it's like nuts. When you look up the Merrick manual, there's multiple drugs that cause peripheral neuropathy. We're talking high blood pressure drugs, cardiac arrhythmia drugs, antibiotics, um, antipsychotics, seizure drugs. I mean, virtually every drug out there. And so you're starting to think, wait a second. So if we're taking toxic chemicals that alter physiology, it's not good for the nervous system. Does, does that make sense? Because all of those have actual symptoms. This is kind of neat. Now, <clears throat> this is a patient who flew out from Dubai and he's a lion trainer. Okay, now he was asking, how come he didn't have any problems up until a couple of weeks ago? Well, this is a really common question because this is the side view of his low back. That's a normal healthy disc. That's a disc that's compressed. So in order to see that much damage on a disc, he's been hurting for 10 years. But he didn't have any symptoms because it's not just the size of the compression. It's the size of the canal. This is the guy's neck. Now, 50% of low back symptoms generally come from the neck. Now, he has, this is the jaw and the teeth. That's the spinal canal. So if you have a small spinal canal, um, just even a small injury is going to affect him massively. This guy's got a huge spinal canal, so he could take a huge impact. Hence, he's a lion trainer. I just think that's cool. <laughs> Okay, so when we look at this, and it's going to be a little bit of an anatomy lesson, but the central nervous system is the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is everything away from that. And there's two functions on it. One functions the organ, the other functions the body. And so when you look at this, the autonomic part of it is like automatic functions. It's the functions that you don't need to think about. It's like the kidney function, 
the breathing. If you cut yourself, you don't have to say, wait, don't interrupt me, I've got to heal this. No, you don't need to do that. Okay, you, you automatically heal yourself. And so this reaction, when we get society to understand that high blood pressure is not a disease, it's a reaction from the autonomic nervous system. High cholesterol is not a disease. It's a reaction from the autonomic nervous system. And, and then you start looking at it and say, wait a second, all the drugs they give for that stuff, okay, actually cause peripheral neuropathies. Isn't that scary? Yeah, so instead of respecting the body that the autonomic or high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, those stress responses are normal, it, it just makes sense. Now, we got to learn a little bit of terminology because doctors tend to speak in Latin so that we can sound a lot smarter. I just had, oh no, seriously, I just had a, a patient that said, yes, my doctor diagnosed me with hydronephrosis. And I'm going, wait a second, hydro means water, Nef nephrosis is the kidney, and it's a condition of the kidney. So it's wa a condition of water on the kidney. I said, is your doctor doing drugs? You know, you know that, 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 because it's just like ridiculous instead of saying, instead of coming up with a diagnosis, let's come up with the actual solutions for this. So neuro means nerve, patho is suffering, ology means study, osis means condition of. So if you get a diverticulosis, it's a condition of diverticulum in the large intestine. Okay, does that make sense? It's not a disease. It just means that the intestinal tract is weak. And then you look at itis is inflammation, neurotoxin, nerve poison, neurology, neuropathy, neuritis. And, and so all of these, they're not diseases. What I want you to understand is it's a description from a body adapting to deficiency or toxicity. Does that make sense? So when somebody says, oh, this neuropathy is killing me. No, it's not. Your nerve is compressed because either diabetes or toxic or there's a nerve compression. Does, does that make sense? And so when we look at the autonomic, this is my favorite part. It's actually, if you're dissecting a human, well, you know, I did it for a while, uh, but you can actually see the autonomic nervous system. Okay, so it's not any ethereal thing. It's actually located in the, in the thoracic area. That's the sympathetic. And the cranial sacral is the parasympathetic. So this stuff regulates virtually all the functions of the body. So what the doctor of the future is going to do, he's not going to diagnose you with reflux or with high blood pressure or with high cholesterol. He's going to deal with you in a sympathetic dominant pattern. Does that make sense? He's not going to say, you know, you have no, no energy at all. You can't, um, uh, your, your body is is just wiped out, okay, he's going to say it's a parasympathetic nervous system problem. So those nervous systems have to be in balance. Now, this here, this is a normal curve in the neck on the left. You can see the other two are Parkinson's because what happens is in Parkinson's, you've, you've seen the shaking, right, in Parkinson's patients? So that means if the head's forward, it literally pulls that spinal cord. So it's like pulling taffy. Okay, so what happens if the, if the taffy gets pulled? Does it get thick or does it get thin? Yeah. It gets thin and stretches out. So that means the nerve influences and the nerve functions are going to be altered. So when we look at somebody with an, a loss of curve in the neck, you're looking at some major neuropathies. So what the, the body's going to do the brain needs constant sensory input in order to um, regulate the function. So if it's not getting sensory input into the brain, it's going to send a motor impulse down to shake, okay, to stimulate the brain coming up. Does that make sense? And that's why we're effective in dealing with Parkinson's because we take the pressure off the nervous system. And I mean, here's a, a gal before and after, and you can see that there's a massive change in the curve. Yeah, she went from a wheelchair to a walker to a cane. I mean, really neat. Now, dermatomes. What, I was blessed to be taught by Dr. William Jacobson. You know what he said? To find out what's wrong with a patient, you got to do two things. You got to ask them, then you got to listen. No, that's harder than what it sounds like. <laughs> Now, when, when you're looking at this, a dermatome is this area specific, um, an area of skin supplied by a specific nerve root. So when somebody says, Doc, this is killing me right here, these two fingers, I say, yeah, that's a six cervical, dermat that's a six cervical nerve root, we can fix that. 
if they say, man, this is killing me right here. I don't know what it is. I say, yeah, that's the eighth cervical nerve root. It's the lower neck area. We can fix that. You know, I got this pain that comes right around here in the groin area. No problem. That's the thoracolumbar junction. I know exactly where it is. You know, we're going to get an x-ray. We're going to fix it. So, but that's understanding anatomy and physiology. How many people have compressed nerves, okay, in the wrist or in the shoulder or anything like that? That's, and then they call it carpal tunnel syndrome. And then they do an operation instead of correcting the problem. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a double crush injury. It begins in the neck. So knowing anatomy and physiology is vital, but I don't think most of the doctors do. You know, they all took it, but anatomy and physiology was like the first few courses. See, you could have a bachelor in art, okay, and then be a medical doctor in about three years. So they're not going back into anatomy and physiology. We need to. So when you look at this, no, that's not a target. Don't shoot the arrow. That's nerve distribution. Okay, so now since that's at the base, do you think that sedentary lifestyles are going to have, say, problems with prostate, bowel, bladder? Yes or yes? Yes. Yeah, and, and then you get people that are riding those, those wedgie bikes. Okay, I know. You see it all the time. We're in direct nerve compression. Now, the difference between proximal and peripheral. Proximal means you've got a pinched nerve here. Peripheral means it's pinched way down the end. Okay, does that make sense? Now, what the nerve roots do, they come right off the spine like this, and then these two join, then this one comes along, then these two join here, then this one joins up here. So the further away you get from the spinal cord, the more nerve roots are going to be involved in that. Okay, does, does that make sense? And so you can diagnose if it's a proximal nerve lesion, like a pinched nerve in the neck or something, or a peripheral nerve lesion just by going on symptoms. Isn't that cool? I mean, don't, I just, I, I really like anatomy. Now, sciatic nerve. Has anyone ever heard of sciatic nerve pain? Yeah, okay, it has nothing to do with the back of the leg, but that is absolutely where it is. Okay, now, it has origins in the low back. So when you're sitting, when you're sitting, you're increasing the pressure on the disc, reversing the discs. And so, so many people are going to come in and they're going to say, should I put ice or heat on my leg? No, it's not a problem of the leg. Okay, that's where the symptoms are. You put ice on the spine to shrink the swelling of it. You stabilize the pelvis. You do some twisting exercises to hydrate the discs. Okay, so you can solve the problem. But this is a huge problem with the, the medical system now because they're looking at the area that it supplies as the problem instead of the source of it. Does, does that make more sense? And I wish you could see that, the sciatic nerve. It's about the same diameter as your little finger. It's about this long, and it feels just like a telephone cord. You could literally pick up a whole cadaver with it. I, I mean, it's really, really tough. And then when you look at this, some neurotoxins. Now, you might have heard of the massive polio epidemic in the 50s. Did you know that it, it was an epidemic of the summertime? Did you know that if you had your tonsils out, you had a 600% increase in uh, polio? No. I know. You know, you, you didn't think you'd learn something today. <laughs> well, when you look at this, and this guy, uh, Dr. Biskine, he actually studied that DDT and some neurotoxins are actually inside that were causing neurologic damage. Now, we, you can say we don't use DDT anymore. We outlawed it. However, it's got a 75-year half-life. Okay, in other countries where importing food are still using it. And there's actually a, a great study, I didn't put it in this one, but it was out of Canada where they have uh, BT corn, which is not for human consumption. It's a, it's a pesticide inside of corn, and it's used for cattle feed. Well, they're finding it in infants now. So that means that the cow ate the BT corn, and there's a toxin that actually damages the gastrointestinal tract of insects. So it survived the cow's digestive tract, survived cooking, the pregnant woman ate it, okay, it crossed the placental barrier, and now it's inside of the infant. So we're going to see large rises, okay, in neurologic damage, okay, in gastrointestinal disorders, in um, depression, anxiety, attention deficit disorder, all of those from the leaky gut. And, I mean, it's, if you don't know that there's an epidemic going on, it's, it's coming. I love this. 
the DDT, they used to say, is good for me. Yeah. Now, chemical sweeteners. There's a really cool bakery in Huntington Beach that, you know how when you go into like a coffee house, they've got the pink stuff, the blue stuff, and the, and the you know, raw sugar? They don't even offer the pink or the blue stuff. And I go in there and I said, guys, this is so cool. You're actually taking responsibility for not allowing people to take neurotoxins. And they looked at me like, I think, you know, the gal behind the counter is like 19. And she goes, huh? I said, no, this is a real thrill for me. I'm not seeing pink stuff or blue stuff. You know, it was really neat. But this stuff, it breaks down into formaldehyde. And that's a journal of the National Cancer Institute where we're talking those artificial sweeteners. And so if you go buy Starbucks and you get the skinny mocha, you're, you're drinking this. Okay, it's a neurotoxin. It's going to actually damage your ner central nervous system. I love this aluminum hydroxide. Now, causes neuron death. Now, this is in most vaccines. And it's in the vaccines because it stimulates an immune system response. See, the, the way they test vaccines is they don't, you know, shoot you and then dump a bucket of virus on you and see if you're, you don't get a sick, okay? What they do is they shoot you and then they measure um, in, a, antibody response, okay? So, and w we now know that antibodies, you can have a bunch of antibodies and still get the disease and very little antibodies and not get the disease. So antibodies don't have a lot to do with, you know, but we're still doing it. Well, Chris Shaw, I love this last one. No one in my lab wants to get vaccinated. This totally creeped us out. We weren't out there to poke holes in vaccine, but all of a sudden, oh my God, we've got neuron death. Neuron death, that means all the organ systems grow off of that central nervous system like fruit on a tree. Okay, and that's, it's killing it. Five flu shots in a row, obviously you don't want to have that. I mean, when we look at this, why is there an epidemic of neuropathies? It's from the vaccinations, the flu shots, the genetically modified foods, the medications. I mean, literally not respecting the human body. I mean, it, it's, it's insane. MSG, this is in most soups and package deals. It's actually a neurotoxin. So, so if you have a neuropathy, should you be 100% organic and plant-based? Yes or yes? Yes. Should you get off of the cholesterol and the blood pressure and the neurontin <clears throat> and you know, all the other medications that they pass out, okay, to deal with symptoms. Uh, I mean, aspirin and Tylenol is bad, fluoridated water. Someday, maybe in my kid's life, um, there's gonna be a big movement to stop fluoridation of the water. But if you fluoridate the water, like in our community, and you heat it up in an aluminum pot, you're gonna concentrate it over a hundred fold. So this can get extremely dangerous, particularly since fluoride is neurotoxic, okay? I know it seems crazy to fluoridate water systems. Okay, because what's it for? What do they fluoridate? Oh, it's to, to help protect cavities. But it causes neurologic damage. Wow. Mass medication of the population without control of the dosage. I don't know what mental giant came up with this, but this is just wrong, like on a couple of different ways. Cholesterol lowering drugs, again, this is all gonna damage the central nervous system. So it, it seems like too simple. If you're, if you're looking at how to solve peripheral neuropathies, you gotta eliminate the medications. Because they used to say that medications were patented. Okay, and they, and they were. Because they call it patent medicine. And that means that it's something unique on the planet, something unique to your body, it's never been around before. And it's only gonna do one of three things. It's going to poison an enzyme, block a receptor site in a cell or make a cell more permeable. And if you do that long term, the outcome is not good. Does that make sense? Yeah, I had one of the other comments on YouTube. They said, stop telling people to get off of drugs. And I said, well, prescription drugs, the right drug at the right time, at the right dosage for the right diagnosis kills 106,000 people a year. It's like a jumbo jet going down every week. Okay, so no, no. If a, if a doctor's passing this stuff out, they need to be fired. And this right here, when you look at epigenetic care, and this is care above the genes, care above the gene expression. Now, we already know that loss of curve in the neck is gonna pull that spinal cord, right? 
do you think that this may, that person there may have some serious neurologic damage? Yes. Yeah. And so by getting pressure off of that, do you think the nerves can regenerate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nerves regenerate about a millimeter a month. Okay. So it may take a, a couple of months um, to start to get to symptoms. The gal on the left, she's been from Canada and she's been here now for two months now and she's able to walk without pain. She's able to extend her arms a little bit more. I mean, you know, it's slow. But if you know that the body is going to heal, the body regenerates. Does, does that make sense? And how do you regenerate it? You get stimulus up the nerves and down the nerves. Because now our nerves, electrical or chemical? Say both. Both. How did you know? <laughs> You're right. It's charged chemicals. So. Now, I'm going to stimulate the sensors on your leg. Did you feel anything? <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel that one? You, no. you didn't feel that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so what I demonstrated was a little bit of stimulus won't get that action potential or stimulus up. Okay, a little bit more will get that stimulus up. So every time that you stimulate a nervous system, okay, like I, right now I'm stimulating the Pacinian corpuscles. I know, pressure sensors. I do this in my off time. So, so you're stimulating, I'm stimulating the Pacinian corpuscles. This means that it's doing a chemical and electrical change all the way up my, my body, okay, into my brain, and that's making it healthier. This is why we work with Parkinson's and MS. I tell them to do cross-crawl exercises, to get more stimulus up those nerves. I mean, some doctors are saying for MS patients, don't exercise. It's like they're exercise intolerant. No, that doesn't make any sense. It's like saying somebody's donut intolerant. <laughs> yeah, does anybody in here work out and get sore afterwards? Yep, you're exercise intolerant, be careful. <laughs> No, so the constant stimulation of the body into the brain heals the nerve and can regenerate the tissue. Does that make more sense? So you need healthy enzymes. When, when I look at this gal with the irritable bowel syndrome, acid reflux, and sleeplessness, does she need digestive enzymes? Does she need to get her nervous system checked? Absolutely. Does she need to not drink water 20 minutes before a meal, during a meal, or 20 minutes after? Yeah, so that way it solves the reflux. Then you look at the irritable bowel syndrome. She's going to go on a juicing and vegetable fast for about a month. And then that's going to start healing the gut. And, and you look at it and it's like too simple. When we look at um, the Journal of Neurochemistry, plants, and I'm talking just asparagus, fruits, <laughs> oranges, cantaloupes, fantastically good for the nervous system. And, I mean, and we're coming into the summertime now, although we really didn't have a winter, but, you know, I'm sorry who's ever watching this back east. They had like four winters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to put a sweater on one day. So, so, so this is what you require to reverse peripheral neuropathy. You've got to find out the source of, you've got to get, get your nervous system checked. You've got to... Um, regular exercise and that's just stimulation up and it could be as simple as just moving the joints okay does that make sense mm -hmm. and then you've got to get proper nutrition this means you can't have the pink stuff the blue stuff in msg um, genetically modified foods it just if man makes it you don't eat it and then sufficient rest this is vital this means that you've got to get deep sleep every night and then prayer and meditation because it really works. It really does. Now, next week, and it, we're going to go on this more, we're going to talk about knee and foot health, and we're going to talk about foot neuropathies and how to regenerate meniscus, how to regenerate cartilage. No, that's not the response. I'm supposed to hear, wow, that's so much better. And now all of these are available on our website. So the, the I mean, just use it, spread it around. You know, it's free for current patients, but, you know, tell people about it. So this way we can, we can help sweet gals like this that want help and the ignorant ones that are just calling us a quack. Hey, you know, you're not going to make an omelet without breaking some eggs, you know. <laughs> so thank you very much.